everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of your favorite segment on my channel and mine, of course, Out of the Vault. So if you are new to my channel, let me just say welcome. It is a pleasure to have you. And for all of you returning, I know that you have all been waiting on bated breath for me to review another fantastic film from the magic of Disney or Disney Pixar or Studio Ghibli, because we still have a couple of Pixar and Ghibli films to talk about that have been in our presence for many a year. And of course, we also need to focus on those as we await the new Disney canon classic. But of course, this is a monumental year because we are very, very close to the 100th episode of Out of the Vault. And based on my calculations, it looks like the 100th episode, God willing, is going to be a review of Raya and the Last Dragon. So I am just going to be very happy to say that it just only seemed appropriate that the 100th episode of Out of the Vault would feature a Disney canon classic. So it's going to be a very interesting year because not only do we have two Disney canon classics coming out in 2021, as well as another new Disney Pixar film, and I'm very excited, speaking of Disney Pixar, that the next episode in will finally be my review of Disney Pixar's Soul because it is coming out on Blu-ray this month. But what I didn't expect was to actually give you guys the opportunity to see a review on a brand new Studio Ghibli film. I didn't even know that this one was even hitting theaters, and for me, it actually premiered on HBO Max on the American release day in theaters. And that, of course, is the 22nd Studio Ghibli film directed by Hayao Miyazaki's son, Goro Miyazaki, Earwig and the Witch. This film was definitely a big surprise. It definitely caught the surprise of the YouTube film critics community, but I think the biggest surprise in regards to Earwig and the Witch is the fact that this was going to be the very first Studio Ghibli film that was presented in CGI animation. So, Earwig and the Witch, of course, is the story of a young orphaned baby who is dropped off at an orphanage's doorstep somewhere in the United Kingdom. And she is definitely someone who appreciates the value of friendship and definitely understands what it's like to have order. But as well, she has a little bit of a mischievous side. And that's just because of the fact that she does not know what her upbringing is. And all of a sudden, one day, this mysterious man and woman who go by the names of Beliaga and the Mandrake decide that she is someone who is going to be taken in by them, but not to be her adoptive parents. Rather, they are going to basically make her their slave. I guess that's the best way to describe it, because she is immediately put to work, especially when she finds out that Bella Yaga happens to be a witch. She is very, very intrigued, but she's really not allowed to learn anything or do anything. All she has to do is get up, clean and do what she's told, and Earwig is not a fan of that. And eventually she will befriend the familiar of Bella Yaga named Thomas, who is this adorable little black cat, of course, well in the vein of Studio Ghibli. And as the film goes on, not only does she really try and bend and break barriers, but she also starts to develop a very interesting friendship with the Mandrake and even Bella Yaga at the end, and then little by little she starts to uncover her past based on a very catchy rock song that helps her uncover more of her past. So I definitely was excited for this film because Studio Ghibli is some of the most beautiful filmmaking that I've ever experienced. And of course, to see this brand new take on the animation style was something that I definitely had some high hopes for. But I have to say at the end that this was not a very well put together film. And it makes me so upset because of the fact that when it comes to films that are directed by Goro Miyazaki, I just never seem to be truly on board with his work. I know that another one of the films that he directed was Tales from Earthsea, and I just remember not even liking that. As a matter of fact, I actually believe I fell asleep in the middle of that movie, but eventually I am going to rewatch it. But I felt this movie to be very, very boring and very uneventful, and even when you see all of these crazy things happen, you just don't seem to be very overwhelmed or surprised by anything. It also was a very, very predictable film. 
Now, I will say that there definitely were some highlights on this film, and that's definitely the voice cast. The little girl, Taylor Henderson, who was chosen to play Earwig, just in case you all don't know, I don't watch the original Japanese audio. I watch the English dubbed versions because I have a strange thing when it comes to subtitles. I only focus on the words and don't focus on the visuals. But there's also some other great cast members, including Richard E. Grant, who voices the Mandrake. We also have Vanessa Marshall, who voices Bella Yaga. And we also have Earwig's mother, who is voiced by... Casey Musgraves, and of course my highlight in this film is definitely Thomas the Cat, who is voiced by the great Dan Stevens. I chemistry between Thomas and Earwig is definitely adorable. I'm also not going to say that I didn't find this movie entertaining. I mean, there were some really witty jokes, there definitely were some very cute moments, but all in all, I just didn't get what I wanted out of a Studio Ghibli film, especially one that was very much a landmark in regards to the way it was animated. I was expecting something grander, I was expecting something really, really special, but also, to a degree of positivity, I also really feel that even though this movie is not 2D animated, you definitely still get the patented Studio Ghibli look, and it really does feel like you are watching a Studio Ghibli film. It's the facial features of the characters, some of the things that are definitely a little over the top, especially the atmosphere as well, and even the music. You can definitely tell that even though it is not cell animation, it is still very much a Studio Ghibli film. But this, unfortunately, was a really big letdown, and I really don't know what this means in regards to the future of Studio Ghibli. I know that Hayao Miyazaki is still working on a project that he is dedicating to his grandson, and it's going to be the very last one that he ever actually does direct, but I'm hoping that Goro and the rest of the Studio Ghibli studio is going to really take all of the greatness that Miyazaki and Takahata put together all those years ago to give us a great series of films for future generations to enjoy. I'm definitely not planning to see this movie again. I am not planning on owning this movie on DVD. I still would say, as a completionist, if you want to see the newest Studio Ghibli film, you definitely should see Earwig and the Witch at least once. So, yeah, not really happy about this movie, though there were some nice little things to take away Away from it, but I am only going to be giving this movie a two stars out of four. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. Please leave your comments in the box below, and let's discuss Earwig and the Witch. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in May 2021 for the next episode. Take care. If you enjoyed the video you just watched, feel free to leave a comment. Also, feel free to subscribe if you want to be up to date with our latest videos. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we'll see you in the next one. Actions speak louder than words.